Chad Choup here for our latest quick takes video. And before we get started, just take a moment, scroll below, you know, click subscribe if you like the content, but be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know what stocks you want me to feature in an upcoming quick takes video, bank it or tank it video. These are videos where I'm just running through four or five stocks. I got five stocks today that we're gonna run through and just look at how they're performing based on the price charts. But well, today with everything going on, we also have a few comments that we're gonna throw in there about what these companies are going through and how that's being reflected in their price charts, but then ultimately where we expect the stock to go from here. So scroll below, leave me a comment, let me know what stocks you want me to feature as we get into our video today. And with that said, with the volatility that we've seen with the, the variants coming out and having an issue with the markets causing a sell-off on Black Friday, the worst Black Friday in 70 years when we're in the middle of a recovery because of worries over a variant. And then the market tries to bounce back a little bit, and then the Federal Reserve testifies before Cong Congress, Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, comes out and basically does a complete 180 from where we were at this time when the pandemic started. Because when I go back, I remember it like it was yesterday. We were actually at a company retreat in March 2020 in Orlando. So that just kind of goes to show you how everybody was viewing the pandemic that was going on at the time and the reaction that we were going to see from the, the governments around the world. The fact that they were going to shut things down was kind of unheard of at the time. We did not think that that was going to be the case by any means. And we were sitting there, but what happened that really changed my mind on the whole outlook because I was very bullish when we started to see the early volatility from the news of COVID-19 coming up and just that you know China was doing all these extreme measures to, to try to trap it. And it was like, well, that's not going to come to the U.S. We're going to stay open. We're going to continue to you know operate as normal and just treat the sick and kind of go on from there. But then when I saw the Federal Reserve slash interest rates, because at the time they were raising interest rates, then they did a complete 180 at that point, slash interest rates to next to nothing. And I knew that that was a panic moment for the Fed. They knew that what was coming was going to be a storm that their little interest rate moves were probably not even going to help because that was a big jump. They didn't gradually do it. It was one full swing where they dropped interest rates back down to nothing. And if they would have gradually dropped them, I wouldn't have panicked. I wouldn't have been worried. But when they dropped them down that extreme, I knew that they were worried about what was coming. So I immediately turned around, took profits off the table, took cash off the table on some trades and added bearish trades. And it paid off big time over that next month there in March. Once we saw the big part of the sell off, we were able to make profits. Now, fast forward to today, I think the Federal Reserve is also kind of tipping their hat at what they see shaping out in the markets. They're no longer worried about this variant that's going on, even though they've made comments about that, how that can impact the economy. They're not worried about that to the extreme that the Federal Reserve has to step in and support the economy again. Instead, they're going ahead with maybe shortening up their tapering, getting around to raising interest rates, because now what they're worried about is inflation. So it's another boogeyman that's out there. But the good news is that we're moving on from the COVID-19 pandemic a bit here. And I think we're getting into now that we have Vaccines out there, pretty much everybody wants to be vaccinated is vaccinated. Now we're starting to get back to a bit of normalcy, and I know we're down in Florida, so it definitely feels a little bit more normal than some of these other states where things are still locked in and a little more tight. Um, but down here, everything seems to be going pretty well, and I think that that's going to start to spread throughout the United States, and we're going to start to get back to some normalcy, and we're seeing the Federal Reserve, again, tip their hat at that, and that, to me, is a reason I'm bullish right now that we're seeing some of this volatility over the variance, over inflation, because inflation is going to take some time to play out. The Federal Reserve needs to get back to raising interest rates. And I think that overall, this is all going to be bullish for the stock market here as we head into 2022. So that's just our, our little background as we get into our trades today to figure out whether or not these are stocks that we want to bank on going higher or they're set to tank their head lower. So our first stock that we're going to pull up, and this one we talk about a lot, Tesla, the electric vehicle juggernaut that's out there that just... It's unstoppable and I think that we can basically just throw this on a chart every single month and take a look at what's going on because last month I mean you see this wide uh, key resistance this wasn't a triangle pattern per se but you just see that this was a major level and then when we broke out of that we actually did a video back then put the stock on our bank list it continued to shoot up higher we talked about Tesla and our unusual options activity and true options masters traders were all over this move that continued to go higher they didn't back away from the volatility that the stock was seeing from the big move they didn't take profits instead we saw born bullish trades go in and it continued to shoot higher then we see some volatility here and now we have elon musk coming out saying that he wants his employees to you know save the cost on deliveries and try to speed those things up and help the company and i mean elon musk is a great leader i would never count him out so the fact that they're trying to 
continuing to improve their processes to make them more efficient. I mean, that's great news for the stock. That's great news for the company. And I love his drive to just always try to do better. So we see the stock here. It's now trading into this wedge pattern. We saw some volatility, expected to bounce around a little bit more, but ultimately you can't bet against Tesla. My line in the sand is going to be this $900 price level way down here, which for the stock, it's, you know, 20% drop, but it gives us a nice cushion that if we don't break out to the upside of this wedge pattern, you can still be bullish on the stock, catch it around these levels and then continue to head higher. But for now, definitely a stock that's going to stay on our bank it list. Look for this stock, hopefully to break out to the upside of this, but just Tesla, it's just, it's just runaway at this point. I mean, you look at where it's went from just two years ago up to today. It is an insane story that we're just going to continue to hit on, continue to follow. And because I know a lot of people own Tesla, a lot of people are excited about Tesla. So this is one that we'll keep on our radar. Another stock I wanted to look at today is Amazon. So this one's, you can see it's in this just trending price channel here. It's headed to the upside. So that's bullish news. That's great to see. And this is going to be on our bank it list because of that, because we're not seeing the break down below this green support. Once it breaks below that, then we'll flip and we'll be bearish on the stock. But for now, it's, it's continued to climb higher. And some good news recently about Amazon is that even though sales on, I think it was Cyber Monday, were overall, they were down 1%. But Amazon was posting record-breaking sales there the post-Thanksgiving shopping days. So we know throughout the pandemic, Amazon has been a big winner. That's why we see this big jump here from the March 2020 where the economy was crashing back out of that because everybody went online spending. You could buy anything you wanted on Amazon. They were still delivering their shipping set to overtake UPS and FedEx. They are on a roll right now. And this little period of consolidation, I think, is a great opportunity to look to reevaluate the stock and to get back in because from here, it's set to head higher. So this stock's going to be on our bank it list. That's probably more long term than when we zoom in. It is in the leading quadrant. This is on my profit radar. So it can, you know, you see it on, even in on this price channel, we can drift back down here to the bottom of it around 3,300 or so. Um, so it's going to have some volatility. That's for sure. But you want to watch these key levels to get the breakouts. And ultimately I'm expecting it to break out to the upside in the months ahead. So Amazon's going to stay on our bank it list for today. Uh, I mentioned that the variant it's been a nightmare for air travel because people are canceling flights, international travel is still not coming back. And now we're going to look at Southwest. This stock is continuing to show weakness. I mean, this is the pandemic back here. This is February. Airlines were just hammered because when the world shut down, nobody was flying. Nobody could fly. There was no reason to fly anywhere because everything was closed. So they had a long, steady climb back. Whereas the rest of the markets, when you see other other charts of just even the S&P 500 is basically a V bottom here where we drop straight down, come straight back up and we are back to new highs in just a matter of months. For airlines, that wasn't the case. This, this took the better part of a year to get back up to these new highs. But investors didn't buy at the new highs. They sold, they punished the stocks to continue to slide from there. And now it's back down here into the 40s. And we go back to my profit radar because this is going to be key. It's in the lagging quadrant right now. That's the red that we see down here. What that means is that it's been lagging the overall stock market, but through the natural rotation of these things, they tend to improve from here. So I'm expecting Southwest to at least catch a bounce here over the next month or so, start to rebound a little bit. And I think that's going to line up nicely with the variant being overplayed a bit. Now, I hope this is true. Clearly, it's all kind of expectations. But from what I've read, I've looked at even the South African doctors talking about the new variant, the uh, Omicron, saying that the symptoms are mild, that yes, it's spreading but I don't think this is going to be as bad as the Delta variant that already ran all through the United States. That's the most prominent one in the United States. So as we go to this Omicron one, I think the media fears right now are being overblown. And I think as that gets dialed back into reality a little bit, at least I hope that that's going to be bullish for the stock market because it's going to turn out to not be the worst case scenario, which I think the worst case scenario is everybody's panicking, thinking that we're going to shut down again. And all. And as long as we avoid that, as long as we avoid a shutdown, which President has, Biden has came out and said that, that's the number one thing that he wants to do is avoid the shutdown as, as long as we can. And I think we're at that point that we should be able to because we have, you know, they're coming out with even uh, pills to treat COVID-19. They have the vaccines. So at this point, we have all the, the medicines basically caught up with the virus. So at this point, we should be fine and we should be able to stay open and continue to get back to normal even as more of these variants pop up. So Southwest Airlines, it's trending lower, but I'm going to kind of buck the trend here. I'm going to put it on my bank it list today 
And this goes back to what I talked about at the beginning that I think we're getting to more inflation. And as our economy continues to open up, airlines are going to be a big winner. So I'm getting back into Southwest today. It's going to be on our banquet list. And sticking with the whole vaccines, the whole theme, we're going to look at Moderna. Now, this is a number one vaccine maker, big winner from producing the vaccines and seeing a ton of sales from promoting them. I mean, you can see it's a massive rally here for the stock since the pandemic began. And some of the volatility that you're seeing here is because, as I mentioned, they have a pill that's coming out that's not Moderna made, but there's a pill that's going to help treat symptoms. That way people won't have to rely as heavily on Moderna's medicines, on the Moderna vaccine. But then we saw news about the variant and look, it shot, started to shoot back higher. So this is a volatile stock. Today, this is going to be on our tanket list. And again, it goes back to my idea. I mean, we're seeing it on the chart too. A lot of volatility here. At the best case, is it starting to create a wedge pattern? But the bottom on this wedge pattern is around 240 bucks. So this whole spike that we just saw is at risk of just overcorrecting and coming crashing back down. So that's why this is going to be on my tank it list for now. Once we get a better formed maybe wedge pattern here or ascending triangle pattern, once it kind of creates that, takes on that technical pattern, then maybe it'll turn to my bank it list. But for now, I'm expecting more risk to the downside. So I'm going to put it on my tank it list for today and expect a pullback after this big sharp run that we've seen. Now, the last stock is Facebook that I wanted to take a look at, or I guess we should call it Meta for their new rebranding that they're going through. And can I just say, have you seen the commercial that they have out about Meta? I mean, this thing, I don't know who their target audience is, but I know for me, you know, the, I mean, I'm at the older end of the millennials, but this did not hit any sort of tone to make it seem cool, hip, interesting. I mean, it looked literally like a commercial that maybe they made in like the you know, 1970s or something. It looks super dated, super weird. And then I know my son, he's 12. So they're in this tween, preteen sort of age. And then middle school, one high school. So he also knows some kids that are older. And I mean, they all hate this, the commercial. I mean, I guess they're talking about Meta or Facebook, but they think it's so dumb that, I mean, they're, nobody's running out to get the Oculus uh, VR headsets and to try to even figure out what Meta means. So I think this is a big miss for them. And Ultimately, I think it may be too early for their branding. I mean, something gave them the clue to go ahead and rebrand. But I think it's just showing up a little bit too early. Their platform, Facebook, the social platform, is still their number one driver of revenue, of everything, of profits, of, of views, of their whole community. So I think it was just way too early to kind of jump ship on that and then create this meta thing that's just maybe years ahead of itself. So the volatility that we're seeing in the stock is part of that. And what we see here though, when we zoom in on this, based on these colored bars here for the profit radar, is it went through the lagging as it was falling, but then it went through an improving and leading a whole basically rotation here almost. Now the next one is weakening um, that we would see, but it did all this and basically went nowhere. So we'd like to see this when it's actually moving in the right direction, when we're heading higher or heading lower, like we saw with lagging. So when we see it go through this rotation and not really catch a bid, I'm expecting it to roll over a little bit more from here at least. So Facebook or now known as Meta is going to be on my tank it list for today. We're going to look for this to head lower out of this profit radar, out of this spike that we've seen. Had a little bit of a bounce, but it just wasn't enough to make me see that buyers were convinced. I'm expecting the stock to head lower here at least over the next few weeks. So that's all for my video today. If you liked it, be sure to scroll below, click the like button to let me know. Don't forget to hit subscribe and be sure to leave me a comment letting me know what stocks you want me to feature in my next quick takes video. So that's all for today. Until next time, I'm Chad Shoup.